The following is an excerpt from the feature documentary film, An American Small Town. To watch the entire film and learn how you can support this important film series, visit www.anamericansmalltown.com. Yeah, normally it'd be probably, what, 90 degrees out on a day like today. Be drying like crazy, go all night. You know, I liken my journey a little bit to what my father's was. When he uh, was in college, he was actually going to school uh, to be a veterinarian, and, and um, he, he kind of got pressured a little bit by his father to come back to the farm. and. and done with college I reluctantly came back and, and was helping and I knew that there were other things I wanted to do I always knew music was important I even knew at a, at a young age that I, I could tell I wanted to be on stage I played trumpet and euphonium in high school and, and dabbled around with piano and, and drums but didn't really take it serious until later in my college career. <laughs> and uh, yeah, came back here to work on the farm and slowly kept getting busier with bands. And turned back. school at UW-Madison, this thing on TV came out called MTV where they actually showed music videos. You know, they actually had videos. It started at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah, yeah, it was amazing. And uh, I can remember I was in ag school at UW-Madison and sitting on the couch and, in our ag fraternity, Alpha Gamma Rho, and, and watching this channel and I, I see this band come on as the satellites and they're on this truck going down the highway, and there's Moro, who of course I didn't know at the time. And the next video is Cheap Trick, you know, and, and honest to God, the next video was the producers, uh, which one of their hits that they had, you know, and just thinking to myself, God, I could, I could be that person, you know, and flash ahead about 25, 30 years, and there I am sharing the stage with them with our CD release party. It took a long time, but nonetheless, it's still pretty cool that it happened in a lifetime. I'm, Pretty tickled about it. It's pretty neat. My brother Brian is mostly in charge. He and I are fifth generation. Uh, he has a, a son and a daughter, both uh, interested in the farm and helping out whenever they can. Um, so six generations coming down the pike. So every so often we get a little clumsy with the tractor and snap a post off. Uh, Did you I feel couldn't it? see where I was going. <laughs> Did you feel it? Oh no, I heard it. I didn't feel it. Yeah. I just kept driving. <laughs> Look at me. Nobody, nobody will notice. Former employee. So that's my brother Brian. That's his son Chris. This is Craig. Chris is partially Colin. <laughs> AKA, what's your 
Logan. Logan. <laughs> He's only worked here for two years, and it, it's, his name isn't Logan. It's Colin. <laughs> We're all good at breaking stuff, but I mean, he's good at fixing things. I'm a little better with the cows, maybe, and I do a little bit different management. When he's here, he takes over part of it. My kids are involved now, and uh, we show cattle. Uh, this last week, we were at the state fair, and it's, it's fun to see everybody pull together for something. And it's it's really uh, that's one of those cool things. We're all fighting for the same thing. You know, the dairy industry and farming itself has changed immensely over the last 20 and 25 years. Uh, uh, there used to be dairy farms dotted all along the road and every neighbor was a dairy farmer. Now we're the only working dairy farm within I don't know how many miles. So this is where all the baby calves are for their first couple of months. Try to keep them separated from each other to, so that they don't cross-contaminate with saliva and, and, and spread uh, viruses or bacteria. Some people, when we've had pictures on Facebook and things with people that come to visit, they go, oh my gosh, you have veal, how cruel you're keeping them and confined. And th th this is not veal. This is, this is trying to maintain the health of the animal as best we can. And there's, this is the one of the most healthy ways that you can do it. I'm actually planning on being a veterinarian. Right now I'm studying at UW River Falls. I've been working here two years, I think. I'm giving them milk. It's from the cows in there. We actually pasteurize it here and feed it to them. And then I also give them grain and water and hay every day. This is probably just a couple days old. Brown Swiss calves are generally born white and they are hungry all the time. If you get run over, we feed you. <laughs> Deal. Yeah. This feed has uh, a lot of corn silage in it and a lot of haylage, which is alfalfa. And we still add in um, soybeans, and they all get kind of chopped up, ground up. Uh, we add minerals into one mix of feed, and they're allowed to eat it as much as they want at any given time of the day. One nice thing about our breed of cattle, which are purebred brown Swiss, they're native to Switzerland, but they have this temperament. We just think they're a little lazy is all. We've been uh, shipping to a cheese factory just outside of Monroe, which is probably 10 miles from here. We're one of like 26 farms, 28 farms. It's the only Limburger cheese factory left in the United States. But we make other cheeses, really nice baby Swiss, and. Yes. The good cheese. There's the family farm like ourselves that have grown to uh, a size that maybe this will be our maximum size. We run about 1,500 acres, milk 200 cows. Um, certainly there are much bigger family farms, but you, know, you start getting into uh, the cover of a commercial farm almost. There's still family farms, but there's they are very much uh, in the commercial side of it. Otherwise, it, it seems to be really small, and then I see a lot of farms our size, and but more and more it's becoming what, what you hear and see is these big commercial farms. We often wonder why we're in it, but there, there just seems to be something uh, innate. There's something that is inside us that we can't seem to stop, especially my brother and now hopefully my niece and nephew. There's something in, in human nature and in life itself where it's, you know, you plant, nurture, and harvest. And we're doing that every year and you, you can sense yourself going back to, to, to ancestors and what it really was. Even though we're doing it in a modern sense, we're still doing the same thing. We're still, we're still planting crops in the spring and, and 
nurturing them through the summer and, and harvesting in fall. And there's something when you get done with the fall harvest that makes you feel very complete.